Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast. It's time for episode seven of Get in the Bin with me, Andrew Musgrove, and I, massive series leader, Sam Mulliner. It sounds like we're inviting people to actually get in the bin, doesn't it, when I introduce it like that? Like, come on, get in the bin. Well, it might be. I don't know. Well, we'll save that for future episodes. There'll be many more people, I'm sure. I don't think but... you and I could fit in the bin, a standard bin, with all due respect. That's you, I'm aware I'm six foot four and probably heavier than I should be, but that that that's that's I, I'm, I've taken that personally. Well, next time we're on Tyneside, we, you know, we could try it out. We'll put it on the YouTube channel. We'll give the people the content they really need. But anyway, back to the episode in hand. As Sam mentioned, there he's well in the lead. Last week was a bit anomaly because we felt so passionately about both items that they both ended up in the bin. That was uh, people who sneer at women's football without question. That needs to get in the bin 100%. And um, what was my item? I've totally forgotten it. Um, what was yours? Do you know it? What was it? No, the episode six was cost rep like the kids. Ah, no, what no that it? was five. That was cost five. Rep- episode six, right? Actually, I do remember now. And, 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 uh, you know. It was the fact that people claim you can't be a fan of a certain yeah. football club unless you're born on the banks of the river that runs through the city. And I also feel like that needs to get in the bin. So last week, both items got in the bin. Don't think it's going to happen again. Don't think it's going to happen um, this week. But last week, those two items are, are a stain on football, I think. So quite rightly, both items got the vote and got the boot. So episode seven, I'm excited about this one. Um Again, I've got another item that I'm very, very passionate about. Something that I kind of see and I shout at the telly in anger because it annoys us so much. Um, and actually, thinking back to things you've said previously, I think you might go for this one as well. But we'll I'll let you go first and then I'll come in with my item. So, Sam, episode well, seven, what's your item? Uh, it's been teased a couple of times in the series so far, but it's time. Uh, oh, it's time. It's time. It's oh, no. ballots. Oh, goodness me. And quite uh, topical as well, because at the time of recording this, and we're recording this uh, just over a week in advance, um, two weeks in advance, actually, because I'm, I'm off next week moving house, um, the club have just relaunched a, a survey for members to fill in about the membership. Did you get yep. the email? Have you filled it in? Yes, I thought it was wishy-washy at best. You weren't a fan. But you're a fan of the communication, though. We've got to praise the communication, right? Yeah. Um, I could easily fly off the handle about this, but I'm not going to because I want to take it back to a a bit of a chronological order before we get to the latest survey or whatnot. When they introduced these changes at the start of the season, as someone who had benefited from the old ways, and I'm talking about away tickets now. I've benefited massively in the past um, for for getting away tickets from my mates who have enough loyalty points who then can't go, so I've stepped in at the last minute or whatnot. Um, and I will still hold my hands up and say the changes they made to the away policy, and I was like, fine, cannot argue, no problem. On the basis premise i think the id checks and the the kind of turning people away at the gate is a bit too far-fetched but the premise of you know doing things properly giving um other people a chance to to build up their loyalty points even like having a little ballot a little mini ballot for for the last few remaining tickets for all season ticket holders i'd like members to be involved in that as well um that would that would be good because pre-takeover away tickets used to go on general sale and be available to members and no problem but you wouldn't get a loyalty point so i used to to go to away games in the past in the, in the bad old days and not have with just my membership and not be able to build up loyalty points which i thought at the time was a bit unfair um but look i will hold my hands up and say i've got no issue with that the home tickets however I don't know why they messed with it. I, I don't understand it. Because you're not capping 
the number of memberships. You're encouraging international memberships. And I'm not naive enough to say, well, you can't do that. And I know it's for commercial growth and revenue and to, and to, to kind of extend the reach of Newcastle United across the globe. I get all that. That's fine. But what I don't get is the, the premise of applying, of paying. So to my own example, so I'll make it personal. Even though I don't want it to seem like I'm whinging just because well, I just, just just before you do that, just before you explain your personal uh, situation, just explain to our viewers and listeners who might not be aware what changes have come in this season to uh, from last season. I just explain how the ballot system in, in terms of getting a ticket has changed, if you remember. So last season and the previous seasons. Um, they would go on sale to season ticket holders could buy an additional one ticket and then members could buy tickets as well. If any were left over, they'd go on general sale. Um, this season, however, and obviously before then, you could choose your seats, where you sit, the map of the stadium, click on your seat, happy days, you sit together. And, and you'd log on, wouldn't you? You'd log on and on a certain day, you, you know, the club would let you know when it was and then you'd join a queue and you just have to hope that you've got a, a low number. And I mean, often, I mean, especially last season, you were talking 25,000 at some points and you just had to hope that you had a, a number in the low thousands to get a ticket. It was... You, you, you were. Know, however, that's... You say, you, you say the number of 25,000, but that's, that's not accurate because people are signing in with more than one device. I know I did, especially when yeah, I came I did to the Carabao well. Cup semi-final. I had my two work computers, I had my phone, my tablet, I had everything going, to, and um, I, I, I got one. There's no, there's, it, it, there's, there's a bit of Schadenfreude about it because you, no matter, there's no perfect way of doing it. Um, but I find the balloting system, which the first one they did was for the Carabao Cup final, I thought that was a bit of a mess. Um, and we were still left with quite a lot of empty seats in our home end. I remember Carl from our channel, he was up in the top tier. He got one very late in the day. And there was rows of seats in Wembley in our end empty. Um, which, for me, was heartbreaking because I didn't, I didn't get a ticket. But um, I'd be more heart... I mean, I mean, I'm over it now. I would have been more heartbroken had we won the thing. Um, but the, the ballot now is you still sign on at a certain time or you got a you got a time frame and you just apply for what grade of seat you would like and, and that only, can happen over three or four and, days can't it and yeah then it, then it only members can do this yeah so for my example i've paid for an adult membership this season and a junior membership for my for my lad which was about 60 quid for the season at no point is there any guarantee of getting a match ticket. So we've entered. I've entered most ballots this season, uh, including all the Champions League games and whatnot. Um, the only time I haven't was, you know, being away or whatever. Um, and I've not been successful at all. The only way, the only time I've got into home games this season was through friends being able to transfer their tickets um, to me when they when they can't go to a game. And on the resale, which I will say is a fantastic, um, a fantastic addition. Um, it's still, again, not foolproof because you still see these secondary ticket websites that that pop up with extortionate fees for tickets. That obviously needs to stop, but it's so difficult to police. But the club have taken a lot of good steps for for the resale and and being able to transfer tickets across. That's great. But the premise of a ballot leaving it to, to chance. I just don't understand at all. Um, I mean, look, if you're lucky in them, you think they're the best thing ever, but, I, you know, and I don't want to make it seem like, because I've never had one through the ballot at all, all season. And I know I'm not the only one. Uh, I don't want to make it seem like I'm just whinging for my own personal greed. Um, I, I guess the question people would be asking you, Sam, is that if you had been lucky enough to get to, say, eight, ten games this season at home, would you still be putting this item on the table to get in the bin? Yeah, because you can't even choose where you, where you really sit. Um, everyone has their own little favourite parts of the stadium that they want to try and get seats in. But, you know, I, again, supply and demand. Um, 
you know, you might not be able to sit exactly where you want, but the original launch, if you if you cast your mind back, was you didn't even get to choose that. Yes, the club rectified it very, very quickly because there was absolute uproar and, and you know, the supporters' voice was heard and we got it we got it changed, didn't we? Because the original launch was you go into the ballot and that's it. You don't get to choose a price cap. So if I was successful, instead of me and my lad sitting in the Gallagher or whatever, paying a kind of average price, we could have been stuck up in the Platinum Club. Uh, why do I want to pay 50 quid for a ticket for a seven-year-old? You know, mm. it, it's just, just, what's he going to get out of it? So that that was obviously rectified very quickly, but I just, I hate ballots. There's, there's no perfect way of... Um, of dealing with it there has been some positive change but ballots just need to go i think that i think they're absolutely horrific well i've got a few more questions to ask you about the ballot and i'll do that in a second after i've introduced my item that i'd like to say get in the bin and it is stuttering run-ups for penalty kicks because it really annoys me and i think yourself part of the the goalkeepers union or at least you used to be back in the day I think if you were still playing week in week out and you you faced a, a stuttering run up for a penalty kick, you'd be you'd be pretty miffed because I think as a goalkeeper, it's hard enough to save a penalty as it is, and yet I think this makes it even harder. It's 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 weighted in the favour of the striker anyway, but then they can do this silly little run up. They can stutter, they can fake it before they take the shot. It's totally unfair. You might as well just get the goalkeeper to stand out the win and just roll it in because he's got no chance, I don't think, when they, when they do this silly little run-up. And it just annoys me. that It just needs to get in the bin. I can't see any more than that. I'm really disappointed in you. Come on, why? Well, you said it was it was a really good one this week and I've, I've laid out my heartfelt opinions on ballots. I've made it personal. I've backed up my... Um, I, I've seen the other side of the argument. I've given praise where praise be need be about the away ticket system and the resale site, and you've come up with stuttering penalties where goalkeepers nowadays are just as guilty as S. Housery as the player taking the pen. When I was a goalkeeper back in the day, guess what I did? I watched the ball. Right, OK, but it's not about the the, the goalkeeper being um, a so-and-so and maybe scuffing the, 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 the penalty spot or... or to hold on to the ball or, or what have you. It's This is the point about the stuttering run-up. It, it, strikers should not be allowed to do a stuttering run-up. So Alan Shearer do it. He just ran straight on and belted in the back of the net. You don't need these silly little fans and what have you. It, it just it just annoys me. It looks daft. And I think it just presents an even bigger disadvantage to the goalkeeper. And it, 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 it's just really unfair. And I'm sorry that it's not as personal or as... Um, emotional is, is your item, but I still feel very passionate about it, and I do get annoyed when I see players doing it. Clearly, it's going to take some power of persuasion to uh, get it in the bin. And Yeah, it will. And do you know what, as well? I was, I was really ready this week, because I don't want to run away with the series and win every week, because you know, I don't want you to be too disheartened, but then <clears throat> when you cut, you, you I, I know some of your ideas and they're really good. I thought you were going to bring some really hard hitting to the table, and then you just come up with a, a, a run up. I, wasn't there a rule change um, many years ago, or was it changed back that they can't they can't stop during their run up? They're allowed to stutter, but they can't stop. It's still a kind of one fluid movement. Yeah, it's rule fourteen in the FA guidebook, and uh, I don't think they can stop, and they can't, they get penalised if they fake the actual contact with the ball as well, um, but, you know, they can feign in the run-up, which I, that's the point that, that that gets me. I mean, I just, what's the goalkeeper meant to do? You see, uh, I looked at the ball, but, I mean, it's not as simple as that, though, is it? Yeah, but then what do goalkeepers do nowadays? Like, look at Emmy Martinez and and players like that shouting it at players trying to get in their head so it works both ways it's not it's, I, I get that it's not exactly the prettiest element of the beautiful game um but it doesn't bother me to this extent i've never once thought about it and i don't even think what i will say is in support of your point i don't even think it looks that clever anymore when they score it no it doesn't it doesn't at all it looks daft it looks real daft i, I think the bigger point is that you, 
goalkeepers are a massive disadvantage with the rules. I mean, they're now penalising them if they take their foot off the line. You know, they've, they've, they've tightened the rules on goalkeepers and yet they seem to have lessened the rules on the, 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 the spot kick taker and just made it easier for them to put the ball in the back of the net. And, you know, apparently, as I say, is already a massive uh, kind of... It, 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 you know, you're pretty much guaranteeing you're going to score a penalty on you. I know people miss them. And keep I, think, them I think more penalties are saved now than there was you before. Think? Mm. I think it's still heavily in the favour of the attacker. And well, I just, it should I, be, though. Well, yeah, but, but I just I don't think that should be aided. The, the, the whole you score from a penalty, that is, you know, if you're a striker, the odds are in your favour of scoring. We don't need more rules to help them score penalty because they don't need any more help. It's already in the favour of the attacker. Would, would you be in favour of the old American MLS-style penalty <laughs> where you have to not. run from yeah. the halfway line? Maybe the half time entertainment, you know, maybe we'll get uh, my dad could do see Jeremy Rubin doing it potentially half time, yeah. not obviously in the actual game because that also, I mean, that's that daft rule. Um, no, I think they just changed the rule back to no fake run ups, no stutters. You've got to, you've just got to run and hit it, you know. You can, so there they are, they are the best penalties, like you mentioned, Shearer. You know, he obviously he didn't have a perfect record, not many people do. Well, no one does. Uh, uh, Letizia was the one that got close, but was it, was it Mark Crossley or Dave Besson that saved his? I'm not even going to attempt to guess. But it was, uh, one of, it was one of those two answers on a postcard. If you're watching and listening, um, but yeah, like I tell you what, as well, like love him or hate him or whatever you think of him, Shell Ramiobi was a fantastic penalty taker. Absolutely superb. Hit it hard, hit it low in the corner, bash, and he did it every time. You'd know where he'd put it, but the goalkeeper still couldn't get to it. So, yeah, I, I get it, but it just doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You do what you got to do, and it well, works thought, both ways. I thought you'd be a little bit more on on side here because as a as a former goalkeeper. Yeah, I, I thought... you say former goalkeeper. You're building it up like I was like some academy prospect that that ruined. I mean, granted, I was the same age and grew up in the same area as Joe Hart, but I don't think I was ever in a in in a, in a shout of getting into the Shrewsbury Academy. Yeah, uh, but it's all about you know personal experience, and you you played as a goalkeeper. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination. I had a decent record of penalties, actually. And did anyone uh, have a stutter and runner? No, no. See, but if that a stutter and run up, you wouldn't be saving as many as you did. I don't think. Probably would. I was. I was. I was. I was big for my age. It must be difficult when you know they're running up and you go and I mean you go down and yeah I just I just think it just hands a massive advantage to the striker and they've already got a massive advantage and it should not be allowed. I'm not saying you should ban the. What about this one step that Ivan Tony does? What's your thoughts on that? Hate it. Is it as bad as a stuttering runner? Do you hate it more than the stuttering runner? No, it was very successful. It was only Nick Pope that saved one of his, wasn't it? Mm. So, See, but I, I don't mind it because I don't think it presents him with an advantage. If anything, it's it's a disadvantage to Ivan Tony because that's a very difficult technique. Yeah, but it know. works. Oh, it works. Yeah, it's it's fantastic, but it's not like something that aids his 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 ability to put the ball in the back of the net. I don't think. I mean, obviously, he's practiced it week in week out, but yeah. So there's mine in the bin. Clearly, um, <laughs> I can have a fight on my hands, and I'll come back to. It. I'll try and persuade you. There was a, there was an old. Burnley, I think it was Burnley player, and I'm talking late 90s, early 2000s. I think it was, was it Graham Alexander, the right back that used to take yeah. it? And he used to leather it, but every now and again, he'd leather it, but he'd hit it with the outside of his boot. So it'd fly in the top right hand corner. He'd hit it. It was amazing technique. I don't know why I brought that up, but it just stuck in my head. Well, right. it's the tech, yeah. I mean, we've talked about Shiva and his technique and what have you. Um, you know, I, I just love when the, when the, Strikers just put their foot straight through it. I always, I'm saying strikers. It could be a fullback. Dave Unsworth was a fantastic penalty yeah, taker well. for everything back in the day. Um, but yeah, all right. Let's get back to balancing because I do have a few, a few uh, further questions for you, Sam, on this. Hit me. Um, as we say, the survey has 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 come about, and we'll get onto that in a, in, a, in a brief while. Is the thirty seven pound that you paid uh, for yourself? Uh, I'm going to say, is it good value? No. Is a good value 
had you had more tickets or had any tickets through the system? Uh, not really. So if you'd had 10 tickets this season, would you still say £37 is, is too it would, steep? It would, it would be... It wouldn't be at the forefront of my mind, no, but I don't think it represents good value. You can dress it up with food and drink discounts, but you don't even get your little membership box anymore. Every year you used to get a nice little commemorative membership box. The kids would get like a like a little uh, bag, hat, scarf kind of affair. Um, you know, you'd, you'd get some merch with it. You don't even get that now this season. That's been been stopped, which I think is a bit of a shame. Uh, it might not be for everyone, but I, I used to quite like them. But um, all right, you, you get you get food and drink discount. I think for the first hour that you get in the stadium, which not many people do, and then in Shearers, I think it's on non-match days. Which if you're coming up for the game, you're just really coming up for the match day, aren't you? So it, it's a waste of time. Um, and then all the other ones are kind of prize draws, and yes, you get to do the you get a chance to enter a ballot for the for the kind of member events where you can go on with a player on Zoom, and, but there's like 50 to 100 people. I've, I'm not bothered with it this season. I know a couple of people who have. Um, I, I, don't, I don't get it. It is more pricey than, than other clubs. Um, so, yeah, I don't... For, for, for that much money for a season... And to not be guaranteed a ticket, even if you're just guaranteed one, you get one guarantee per season. But yeah, but how do they do that? Because they'd have to, they'd have to cap it to implement that. They would have to cap it because we don't know the yeah. number of, of members. But it's fair to say there's more members than there is seats available. So they would have to cap it. And I guess the argument, maybe from a business point of view, is that if people are willing to pay and there's the demand to pay, then you take that money because it's it's really helpful for the club and the, the 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 investment into it. I guarantee you there'll be fewer next season. You think? Yeah, guarantee. Are you, because are you going to sign this up? Was a, this was a, um, yeah, I am because I kind of have to. <laughs> I've got. I've not really. Well, I have got a choice. Of course, I've got a choice. But yeah, I will still sign up because I'm a mug when it comes to things like this and my heart leaves my head and I can't not go to games and I still again I, my my friends with their scatty planning will come to my advantage and, and will get me in every now and again this season um, and I continue to constantly hit F5 when the when the resale goes live um, again that's, that's a, a task in itself and it's only worked for me um, just the once this season. Granted, that was for PSG at home. Um, but yeah, it, it's. Um, I, I get the commercial implications. I really do. I appreciate it. We've got so much revenue to grow, but I don't know. There's principles of certain things. And I think one of the changes, and people might correct me in the comments, and uh, please do if I'm wrong, but I, I remember, I think at the start of this season when the memberships came in, and I'm, I'm a member. It did a change where you used to be able to buy two and then it went to one per person. Maybe that was last season the change came in. And I think this season they then implemented it where you could actually add another supporter number who had to be a member, but you could actually add them to your purchase yeah. if you were lucky enough to to get, um, or you could at least, at least enter them into the ballot alongside yeah, you. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I have to do with me. Yeah. Yeah. And there are questions, and again, we don't know, people speculate there are... Uh, Fears that if you you know if you want to go with your your dad and your brother and you you know your, your your son that's four of you, does that leave you at a disadvantage because I that's so. four seats in a route next to each other that they have to find or doesn't it at least with the old system you know you could pick you know you could pick one person beside you and okay if there wasn't two seats after that but there were two seats behind you you could pick them and you could still be within the same vicinity and you could you could see how many seats were available so it is something that I think. I think people would would welcome a bit of transparency on how the ballots picked, on how the seats are, are are selected, and things like that. And it sounds very boring, but I think the club could do themselves a lot of favours by just opening up and saying, "Okay, this is how we do it. This is how it's run." And people would, you know, people would be upset. People would be maybe not happy, but at least they would know what they're they're dealing with. 
Um, but again, I think it's, it, it is it's very good of the club to to want a canvas opinion. And we'll get onto the survey now. Um, I filled mine in. You filled yours in. You set the start there. You didn't you didn't sound too impressed with it. No, I thought it was I thought it was a bit wishy washy because it, it's asking. It's basically I thought their angle was to to kind of just get what's positive about your membership and what's value for money and what do you value from your membership. At no point was there any questions on ballots. No point whatsoever was there any questions of, are you in favour of ballots? Do you, What do you think of the ballots? There's a little um, added comment at the end, which I, which is when I put in about ballots. Um, but again, I thought it was... Um, it was just trying to find the positivity from 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 the membership and trying to kind of make it seem like it is value for money. So that that's it, why I wasn't. It did ask you though. It did ask you if you're not going to sign up, why not? And one of the options was was lack of access to tickets. So I suppose if fifteen twenty thousand people rate that as the number one reason why they might not sign up next season, then the club might sit up and and and, and take note. But I think the fact they're sending the serve out, out and I, I can I can see your angle but i also think i think they understand there's a little bit of discontent towards the current system and they're trying just to kind of canvas opinion and, and i think we will see changes what that would be i'm not sure but i think they are i think they are trying to understand the 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 anger uh from some and how they can make it better and that leads me on to the next question sam for you is is what is the solution <laughs> Again, I, there's there's not going to be a way to please everyone. There's just not. Um, is the home system has the home system improved from how it was last season? Not for me. There are little tweaks you could make. Um, again, keep keep the resale um, the resale facility on. But I don't know. It, it might it might be a case of things need to be tinkered with over a, a period of time. But for me, the home ticket system has gone two steps backwards. Um, with with balloting, I just don't understand it at all. Um, but again, you're not going to please everyone, no matter what you do. And yes, it's supply and demand. And yes, we need to increase capacity at St James's Park, or heaven forbid, move to a new stadium. Ugh. Um, but it, it's it's such a tricky one. I don't have a concrete PowerPoint presentation of, of how we do it because if I did, then I'd be a lot smarter and I'd probably be employed by, you know, someone who's going to make me very well off, but I'm not. So it, it's, 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 it's so tricky. Um, but it does it does need tweaking because, like you say, for your point earlier, if you want to have a have a group of four with you sit next to each other, it's impossible. It just won't happen. If if if, if you pick four, so if you, there's four of you, all all members, you can go all all in the ballot and and do whatever. You pick price category B or whatever. So you want to be in the Gallagher or or Leeds or whatever. How often is there four seats together? Free. And it'd be interesting to know if anyone's watching or listening. Have you? What's the highest number of tickets next to one another that you've attempted to get? Mine's two. I've not gone any higher because I just don't think it would it would work. Again, you know, I don't know. It probably are some examples where it has worked, and there'll probably be some examples where it hasn't. But let us know in the comments. Um. Okay. As we said, there the solution to the ballot system is not one that's going to be easy to find. If indeed there is. One which I don't think there will be. I think they've got to cap it. I think that's. I think that. I think that's what they've got to do. They've got to cap it, um, and that will then mean you've got more chance of getting in. Of course, people will then miss out and won't be able to go. It makes it kind of a closed shop. But I just yeah, that, and that's that, that, that's it. That's a problem. That's an issue. It is. It is. It is. Um, and it's getting that balance of people who've had zero luck, and then getting the balance of of, of giving people more opportunity to get a ticket i think it's right that obviously it's drawn through look and it's a random allocation i don't know how you would guarantee everyone a ticket because it's just not going to be doable it's be a logistical nightmare uh, but i think capping it would would be a sensible idea so it'll be really interesting to see what they do um i'm gonna have to try and persuade you even though it's a i can it's a losing battle 
I'm not going to persuade you. Yeah, like that. I, I, I am. I'm genuinely disappointed in you. Because you thought what that I'd be bringing an item that would challenge yours and and what? Yeah, I, I think I think this is a good. I think this is an item. No, I think this that, is that to me oh. is signifying you're going down with a whimper. You are. No, you are Sheffield this... United at half time at Bramall Lane, three 0 down, and you are just absolutely taking a beating. No, this is an element of a, of the game on the pitch, which spoils it, which stains it, which needs to be eradicated. For about it, four seconds. It doesn't matter. It's a crucial part of the game. Not crucial. It doesn't even happen in every game. Yeah, but when it does happen, it change can change the face of, a, of the game. So does any yeah. penalty. Yeah, but it, this hands the advantage bigger and better and, and more in the favour of the striker yeah. when they've already got a huge advantage. Yeah. You're having a mare. No, I can't. I can't believe that you're not. Even if you don't think it's it's as important as your item, I can't believe that you're not on board of this and you're not on board of getting rid of stuttering run-ups. I was willing to give you a chance today as well, genuinely, because I am a nice. I'm I'm a genuinely nice person. Sometimes I don't need your sympathy. No, I think you were going to gonna have it. You were going to have. I, it. I don't. I don't need. I think people listening to this will will agree and say. Stuttering run-ups are awful, and that needs to get out of the game. It's it's just an unfair uh, disadvantage to the goalkeeper in an already horrendous situation when you're faced with a penalty, and it's just a, it just spoils the game. I think people would agree with me, um, and I hope they do. And I hope the in the comments, even though I feel like I'm going to lose this one, I hope in the do you, comments. Do, do, what, do you want to send it to the one. people again? Then that worked well for you last time, didn't it? Yeah, but the thing is, our audience, I think there's more people will be impacted by your points. I think I think you would win that and win that very comfortable. No, but this isn't but it's be, don't don't be like that. I, I didn't say just, anything. Throw his hands up and raise his eyebrows like a like a father in an argument with a disobedient child. Uh I'm happy to open it to the floor. Because I, I don't I'm confident if you want to do that, if you want to do that, because I think the the ballot situation. I can understand. It is annoying. I mean, my father has had. He's had luck recently, actually. But he went from the Crystal Palace game up to the, Bournemouth, well, or the, up to the Wolves game without a, without a ticket. So that was a wee while, um, and he applied for every ballot. So no, I, my you know I've got people affected by it. I just think the fact that there's no, easy solution to it. You know, if you're bringing it to the table to get in the bin, what's the alternative? Can, I, just... can, I, can I give you one last story to, to make you change your mind, to make you avoid a public beating on social media in a poll? <laughs> Come on, then. So, so, so last month we had, um, it, was, it was my little one's birthday, and we, we had um, a lot of stuff planned. Um, so we were, gonna, we were coming up for three or four days, and we'd got um, a stadium tour booked, which is, you know, you get discount with that with your membership. Um, we, we, had, we were going to go to the training ground, which we did, and he met Bruno, got his autograph, amazing. Um, and just, you know, taking the city, because, you know, living in the Midlands and whatnot, we don't get to... It's always a bit... Of, it always seems a bit of a rush, especially with, um, um, you know, with, with little ones or whatnot. So... We got everything booked, hotel booked and everything. So go in the ballot for Bournemouth at home. Not obviously not successful. So right, what are we gonna do? Um so I had to coerce my good friend Carl and his brother Chris, who have um their season tickets are front row of the Gallagher, which we've we've sat uh, sat in before. And I've like coerced and, and paid them off to kind of transfer their tickets over to me and Charlie just because we can't not go up for a couple of three days and, and like not go to the game and like you could, all right you can go and watch it in Shearers but it's not really the same it's his birthday you know I want to make it special and it kind of angered me it really irritated me that I've had to like stoop and and kind of embarrass myself and call in favors from friends to give me their ticket well not give me I paid them um, for uh, for tickets when you know I could have. You know, I could have just bought them under the in under the old system. It really, really <laughs> not. Sam, no guarantee there either. And look, that is 
you are more it. successful than oh, well you, you're more likely to do mm. that you know what you're going to do you know you've got a oh, set yeah. time you've got the little stick man that walks across your screen it, it would be interesting if some clever mathematician you cast out your fan could do some maths maths and stats and and, and bring up the prob- probability of whether you were more successful on the old system or the new system look that is you know a heartbreaking story and i'm glad it worked out um in the it end did. it really it really Charlie, irritated but, me but you in that situation would be one of tens of thousands of people yeah so that again highlights just what a difficult thing this is to fix and to and to remedy and then even for some who have been to the majority of games through the ballot they'll sit there and say well actually it doesn't need to be remedied because it's all right for me and this this thing getting the balance is going to be horrendous you're never going to please everybody and I and wish I had the solution. That's the only flaw in yeah. my argument. I, I don't wish envy I had the, the person solution. having to make it. At least with my item, it's an easy change. You ban it. You, you boot them with this stuff and run up. It will, make, it will make no difference to anyone. God, it's so well. It's so well. got so much more uh, chance of scoring a penalty with a stutter run up, I reckon. The odds are definitely more in your favour. Definitely. I just, I, do you know what? I, I think after we finish today, you need to have a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror. Because you've been so rude this week, topics. Sam. No, no, because you've been so rude this week, I am not going to give you the victory. I'm going to open it up to the floor and I'm going to get people to vote. And I will be knocking on doors. I will be canvassing and I'm going to win this. I've got more chance than Mr. Sunak, anyway, um, <laughs> hopefully, uh, than winning this, uh, to win this vote. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I accept your ballot argument. It's horrendous, but I'm sticking with my item. It needs to get in the bin. Stunt run ups is a horrendous part of the game. Vote for me, ladies and gents, because you know you want to. You know I'm right. Sam, what would you say to the people? I don't need to say anything. Their minds are already made up. There we go. Well, this has been episode seven of Get in the Bin with me, Andrew Scrub, and Sam Mulner. Thank you as always. Series leader. Us. Series leader, Sam yes, Mullen. Yes, yes. Well, do you know, maybe I, I'm a slow burner. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe I'm like a I'm a Rafa Benitez Nikasi United team. Or are we carrying on this series until you edge in front, then all of a sudden it's gonna stop? Yeah, yeah. We'll quit. Save. Football manager, export. Um, yes. But thank you for watching. Hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and if you're on the podcast channel, leave us a rating and a review. It's much appreciated. Head over to Connect Live for all the latest Newcastle Night news. From myself and Sam, we'll see you guys next week.